Inside this box is the HP X360-14C, and if you didn't know any better, it would look exactly like the one that we've already unboxed and already reviewed and already put in our best of 2020 list. But it's not, it's different, it's got some upgrades, and you need to know the difference between this one and its predecessor so that you can make the right purchasing decision. So to be perfectly honest, we weren't really in a rush to get this Chromebook in. We saw the announcement, we realized it's basically a small iteration to the existing X360-14C that had the Comet Lake 10th gen Intel Core processors inside. Uh, it's got the same 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. Uh, from what we've read, it's the same 250-nit screen, which is really my only knock against that, that Chromebook. Because everything else about this thing is, is nice. It looks good, it's built really solidly, it's got a great keyboard trackpad. I'm, I'm speaking of the existing 14C. And because it's basically the same Chromebook, really this what we want to do in this video is just kind of point out the couple small differences there are between the two and make sure that you're looking at the right things whenever you go to buy them. Uh, and the charger here, kind of standard fare, uh, two-piece USB Type-C. There's nothing really else in here worth talking about. So we'll get all that stuff out of the way. And just like last year, this thing looks great. I mean, it, it's... It's an attractive Chromebook. And they've got the cool new HP logo. I can't remember if uh, they had that uh, logo on there last year or not. I'm not really sure. Uh, but it's just those four lines that make the HP logo. I think HP should replace all of their logos with this logo. That is so, so sweet. Uh, it's a really cool look. Uh, and it looks really big uh, on, on here. It's very prominent. Uh, but the color is really nice. It's, it's aluminum definitely on the top. Uh, it feels like a, probably a plastic bottom, which again, if you're going to put plastic in a Chromebook, that's the place to put it. Like the bottom panel, that's completely okay. Uh, we've got some fan ports down here, big nice feet uh, that give it a nice grip on the table, which is always awesome. They swapped out, like these hinges are really cool looking. Uh, they actually have like an indention right where the, the Chromebook kind of meets there. Uh, so it's a nice little touch that looks good. And they're matte finish, so it just kind of gives it a cohesive look across the back here. Uh, fan ports there. Around the side, we've got that jaw drop USB A type, our USB A uh, uh, port there. We've got a micro SD card slot, USB Type C, headphone microphone jack. Around the other side, another USB Type C power volume rocker, and then that really fun switch there that will turn your camera on and off, which I really like. I don't mind just having a switch up top, honestly. It's just a shade that covers your camera, but this is a nice touch. Uh, we see it in the uh, Elite C1030 as well. It's uh, it's always a welcome addition to be able to just have a hardware switch to turn your camera on or off. All right, so as we crack this thing open, it's got a really strong magnet kind of holding it closed there. Um, you can see even on the internals, most of all of this looks a lot like what we had last time around. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The last year's model, you can kind of see it probably there a little bit with the gradient as, as it kind of rolls off the edge. The entire thing did that last year on the edges. They've kind of flattened this part out, but you got your upward firing speakers here. You got this big, huge glass trackpad, which is really nice. Uh, it's got a soft click. I, I love HP's like high-end trackpads, and this is no exception. This thing is really, really nice uh, to use. You get the fingerprint scanner. So I mean, you're getting some additional niceties here with this Chromebook uh, that are that are notable, um, especially you know with the camera being able to be flipped on and off the fingerprint scanner, upward firing speakers, and then HP's keyboards have been pretty awesome uh, for, I don't know, the last few years. And this one just feels like no exception there. It just feels really good. And, you know, spoiler alert here, I did open this up and use it for a few minutes before we did this unboxing. It's a review unit, so uh, I wanted to make sure it was gonna power on and all that kind of stuff, and we had to wipe it down. Sometimes we get these in and they're not the cleanest looking things, but let me get logged in here. I don't know that I even set up a fingerprint. No, I did not. Um, but during the setup process, like I can tell you, the, the, the keyboard feels awesome. Uh, that's not surprising. Again, HP's been making great keyboards. Uh, that should be pretty good on the screen. I'll check with Joe. Uh, I've got it cranked down. Again, I don't want to harp on the screen and say that it's terrible, but it's a 250 nit. It's a 16 by 9, uh, 14 inch, 1080p panel. Colors are great. It looks really good. Uh, and it's bright enough for most conditions. If they just get it up to 300, 325 nits, 
we wouldn't have to worry about or talk about this at all. The uh, Asus CX5400 has a 14 inch 1080p panel that gets like 300 to 320 nits. And I never think about screen brightness. This one, during the day, if I've got it on my desk, and again, I'm speaking of last year's model, uh, if I put it on the desk and the sun's really flooding in, I, you just feel it. Like you can tell it doesn't have any more brightness to give you. Uh, but other than that, the viewing angles are great. The colors look good and punchy. It's IPS. It's touchscreen, obviously. It's USI compatible. So I brought a USI pen here. Um, so obviously all that stuff works. And let's see if this does. I haven't tried this yet. Um, so there should be a spot over here, I believe, where the pin should just clamp on. Maybe? No, there it is, yep. So that's the same as the last year's version too. So there's magnet set up, this is HP's pin. There it is. So if you find that spot, uh, the pin will clip on there and obviously is not gonna fly away if you know, you're know you using it on the desk. Is it the most secure location for it? Eh, probably not. And the magnets aren't as strong as something like the uh, X211, their tablet. Uh, but ultimately, it's uh, it, it's pretty decent here. So, I mean, you're getting a really nice keyboard, a really great screen, upward firing speakers, the, the camera on and off switch, your fingerprint reader, uh, Core i3 11th Gen, which we know is just an absolute monster. It doesn't have the, the awesome new GPU in it. Uh, so if you're looking at like Borealis Gaming or something like that uh, down the road, that, that may not be a good fit for that. But for most everything else, this thing's gonna be fast. Eight gigs of RAM's plenty. 128 gigs of storage is uh, plenty of room. So there's really no downsides here. And that's the main point of this video. This is not that different. If you wanna hear us talk more about this device, we'll link the review, uh, the full review of last year's version of this. Everything else is so much similar to that device that it's not worth sitting and talking about whether it's a good Chromebook or not. It's a great Chromebook. It's nice and it feels premium. Uh, and at $450, it's ridiculously priced. I mean, that's that's insane for this kind of uh, quality. I mean, you're gonna pick this up, it feels substantial and it feels quality. The big thing I wanna point out to you all is make sure that you're picking up this one because I've seen on Amazon just today looking for $450, um, you're looking at picking up the 10th gen Core i3, 8 gig, 128. It still says it's HP X360 14C. It doesn't indicate anywhere in there that you're buying a 10th gen processor unless you're looking at the processor uh, model number. And so if you see a 10 in there, 10 whatever, then that's a 10th gen. You wanna make sure you're getting an 11th gen. So it should say Intel i3-11, blah, 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 after that. And if you're looking for that and you get that, you're gonna be getting a much better deal because this is a much faster Chromebook. The Core i3 of this generation versus last is a big, big jump in performance. It's got better, better battery life and you know a, a little bit updated build. And so overall for 450 bucks, this is the one you wanna get. You don't wanna get last year's. You're getting an extra year of AUE on this one. So it's gonna last you a little bit longer. There's just no reason at this point to go buy last year's version of this Chromebook, even though these two are very similar. Unless you see some sort of crazy deal where it's like two or 300 bucks, make sure that you are buying the 11th gen version of the X360 14C. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button and be sure to ring the notification icon as well. If you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.